Last week, President Bola Chinobu restricted ministers, ministers of state, and heads of agencies of the federal government to a maximum of three vehicles in their official convoys in order to cut costs. His action seems not to be going down well with some security professionals who say it will affect the securing of lives and properties. Notwithstanding, the viral video of Honorable Alex Ikweche, who assaulted an EALIN boat driver in Abuja, revealed what some of the Honorable Members use security operatives for, especially policemen attached to them. In the footage, Ikweche was seen threatening to make the driver disappear without facing any consequences. Joining us now as we review the limiting of security personnel for security officials and the abuse of security personnel attached to very important personalities in Nigeria is Mike Ejo for former DSS director. Good morning, Mr. Mike Ejo for good to have you again on the morning show. Thank you for having me, Ruben. Well, Mr. Geoffrey, the subject is VIP protection in one regard and the protection of state assets. Now, in one regard, you know, ministers, ministers of state, President Tinubu saying he needs to cut costs so they won't have more than five persons, four policemen, one DSS, and not more than three vehicles, even when we have a monetization uh, policy in place. Second, we have the example of the... Uh, of the uh, House of Rest member Alex Equeche, uh, uh, who was boasting in recorded video that he will use uh, the policemen attached to him to make uh, a, a boat, uh, you know, driver, e alien driver, who he said was disrespectful to him, to disappear. And then in another case, you know, members of the uh, Ministry of Power uh, got uh, VIP protection too to fix electricity access in northern parts of the uh, country. And many Nigerians are saying, this is very wasteful. Why do we have to use policemen and DSS, you know, to do a policeman work to protect uh, VIPs or to protect, protect uh, state assets? And how do we cut costs in that regard? Well, you are a security sector expert. What do you think? Well, um... I'll look at it from two angles. First of all, uh, the security aspect and cutting down cost. Uh, I don't see how it's going to cut down cost, except, of course, reduction of vehicles. In a normal motorcade, in VIP protection, you normally have three cars. The lead car, the principal's car, and the follow-up car. That is the normal... Uh, uh, motorcade for VIPs. So I think uh, the president must have looked at that and looked at the other vehicles coming in as wasteful. Now we are talking of uh, increase in fuel prices and you put so many vehicles on road, it's going to increase costs. So that is on that aspect. Well, I'm looking at it from the security viewpoint. First of all, four policemen to and uh, one DSS person. Uh, that in itself, it's, it's okay by me, but uh, for the ministers and the heads of uh, uh, MDAs, I am not worried about them. But I'm worried more about the abuse. That's why I say I want to look at the security aspect. We have people who have no means of livelihood, people of questionable character and being protected by the police. You have up to 12, 12 policemen, you know, looking at uh, just uh, people who have no means of livelihood. I have a case I'm just looking at, uh, but I'm still looking at to see how police can handle that matter. A situation where the, the police will be supervising assault of individuals. A case happened recently, and uh, it's been looked into, being investigated. And that's exactly what happened with uh, the honorable member, Ikweche, who was boasting that he would use the police with him to deal with uh, the, the driver 
and uh, that the driver would disappear. Uh, these, are, these are very dishonorable actions. But uh, again, he has come up to apologize. But the damage has already been done. How do you remedy such a damage that has been done? And it's not alone in this matter. So many people are using the police to abuse innocent citizens. And I think this should be checked. You recall that uh, about July, after assumption of office, the IG, the Inspector General of Police, did direct that all these people should be, all these details, police details, should be withdrawn so that they have men in the police to work with. As we speak, I'm not sure that has been uh, complied with. And you recall again in November, the president gave the same directive that these people should be withdrawn, the police details, so that we have police. Now, we don't have policemen to work with. I, I continue to sympathize with the police in terms of uh, manpower. The recruitment that has been said to be made is not being done. And from records, we have less than 400,000 policemen now. I'm just being on the uh, extreme side. Over 120,000 are deployed for escort and uh, VIP protection. So where do you have the men to work with? I think uh, we, we should look at this very critically, that these directives from the president and from the IG must be complied with because a lot of people are using police to even abuse innocent citizens, right. which is a very, very unprofessional, uh, yes. Absolutely, all right. I, I, that's the question I'd like to ask you to probe why. Um, the IG of police, actually, when a new IG of police comes in, we can almost read the script of the next statement he would make. They are withdrawing. Uh, police officials or private or security from VIPs in Nigeria. But this has seemed to be an impossible directive to obey. Is it, what is the real challenge? Why can't that directive be obeyed? Especially because we talk about um, not even having enough policemen, enough security um, operatives to manage the number of population of people in Nigeria. Why is it such, such a difficult task? And then beyond that is, this three um, convoy for the uh, ministers and um, heads of departments, ministries and departments in, in the federal government, some people still say it's, too, it's still too much. That because of this, where we are currently as a nation, trying to tighten our belts, we're saying that we don't have enough money for certain projects, why do they need three? Is it possible? for them to be protected with less numbers. I know you said the standard is three, but is it possible for us to have protection for them and even employ the use of technology? Because quite frankly, having, we have 48 ministers. Do, if you do the math 48 times three, imagine still at that, it's still quite exorbitant. Are there options that are available? So the first question is why is it impossible for private security to VIPs or security policemen used as private security to VIPs to be withdrawn? despite successive IGs who have called for it? And then also, do we need three uh, convoys for our ministers and heads of departments and, um, and ministries and departments? For me, it is not uh, difficult to implement, but uh, I think the police authorities should be in a better position to answer that question. For me, I believe that, uh, you know, because of, uh, funds, because these things are not done for uh, free. They are paid for. But if we can reduce the number, I think that will help to get uh, uh, the number of policemen to, to be deployed. You go to some stations, you have only one, one policeman or two. You go to some our stations, you have nobody to, 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 to uh, report your matters to. So this is very, very difficult. Then on the convoy reduction, like I said, the minimum convoy is three. Let us see if this number, this minimum number can be implemented. I doubt it too, if it, that, that we, we can restrict ourselves to these uh, three vehicles. If we can, then we must have uh, made some savings. I was in Rwanda uh, recently, and uh, I, the hotel I was staying, I saw just two, three people standing out, and I asked, 
uh, as a security man, I knew there was something, you know, I missed. And I asked. They said the president of uh, Rwanda just came to attend a meeting in the hotel. But who can't do that in Nigeria? Despite the fact that uh, I'm not dismissing it, but we don't have that substitution in terms of attacks on personalities or VIPs. We, they require, they need our protection from the SSS, from the police, because they are representative and embodiment of our nationhood. They need our protection. So we don't have to wait until something happens before we say we'll give them protection. But the concentration is too much. We have so many security challenges. Let us get men to deploy and do a... I'm not worried. I'm not worried with the deployment to the ministers and some dignitaries, National Assembly members. But I'm worried more. And I think the IG should look into it. People who are not entitled to, because they are businessmen, some people who have no means of livelihood, some are involved in this uh, Yahoo Yahoo, and they are, they are giving police escorts. They are with siren, they are going everywhere. It doesn't give us a good image. It doesn't help us in terms of maintenance and security. And they're, they're, something must be done to check this. Absolutely. Something must be done. But I'm glad you alluded to the bigger picture of the security situation. And uh, of course, right now we're grappling with a, a pretty serious situation with regards to the security of our state assets. Uh, the Deputy Senate President uh, Barao Jibrin made a statement that uh, terrorists who uh, are armed to the teeth according to him, are located in strategic areas around uh, some of these power towers that have experienced issues that have been vandalized and so forth. And my question to you is, um, how did we get here? How did we get to a point where VIPs, and like you said, even those who are not VIPs but believe they're very important anyway, can have a long convoys uh, filled with policemen, yet our electricity towers are unmanned, unprotected, and now at, uh, at, at, at the, the, the peril of terrorists who are armed terrorists who are now making it difficult for us to even access our own state assets. Uh, in your view, how did we get here? Well, it's, it's quite unfortunate that uh, we are here. Uh, how we got here, only God knows. But uh, we cannot fold our hands and throw our hands into the air without addressing the issues. Now, the president has directed that Policemen, soldiers, along with the NSA, should provide and restore light. These are key and vulnerable points. They are very important installations of government that requires protection. And this is where I expect the civil defense to come in, because they are to protect all these are strategic uh, installations. They should be deployed. Or alternatively, withdraw more policemen, withdraw more soldiers to protect our uh, key and vulnerable points, so that the, the civil defense can now engage in uh, stabilizing the locality where we have all these challenges. Like the, you, you rightly pointed out, our key installations, you see, when you, there's no power, no business will go on. And this is crippling our economy that is already down. And I believe that uh, uh, we should do more. In fact, I was watching a, a video before I came into this place. A trailer driver lamenting that it will take, they will pay 700,000 from Adama to Port Harcourt on transportation, on bribing the police and the army on the road. And if you see the way they conduct, the military is everywhere. Military is not supposed to be outside to be seen by, but where they are deployed virtually everywhere, in oil installations, in even houses. And this is, this is not helping us. We must address our security challenges. We must, as a matter of priority and urgency, readdress our security challenges. Because without security, without provision of security, there won't be any meaningful development in our country. And we'll have a lot of security challenges. There, are no, there, there is no geopolitical zone now without its own peculiar uh, security challenge. And we need to address all this.
Okay, uh, Mr. Joffo, beyond the issue of costs, there's also the argument that the security agencies are overstretched. They are beyond their limits. Do you think that uh, going back to that conversation about state police, the creation of state police, would be an option to address the issue in terms of number of personnel and capacity in terms of reform to be able to police the Nigerian state properly? Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Uh, you see, I've, if you notice that most of the time I appear on this program, I've also, I've always advocated for creation of state police. And uh, I appreciated the fact that the President and National Assembly took the initiative to uh, ensure the establishment of uh, the state police. That is one viable option we need to explore. Because, you see, Security problems are local, and we need local solutions. If you get a state police, of course, the argument that some states cannot afford it, but there are some states that can afford it. Let us make law to ensure that with this state police is created, and when you apply it and see how effective, I continue to emphasize if you recall uh, the issue of uh, Ondo State, uh, the Amoteku in Ondo State, it's not that crime is completely eliminated in Ondo State, but it, be it has become a model to other states to follow, the to uh, encourage us that once this police is established, we'll be able to check uh, some of our security challenges. Uh, again, the argument against state police is abuse by the governors. And I ask, as we are now, even in the judiciary, let us not di digress from what we are, even in the judiciary, is it not being abused? The police as constituted now, the federal police, are they not being abused? Are, not, are they not being used? Like I told you, there's a case in Delta State that I'm still waiting for investigation to be conducted, where 12 policemen accompanied somebody who has no means of uh, uh, livelihood to attack an in innocent individual at a function. And nothing has been done about it. So we need to look at all these things. State police, it will be abused, yes. Any person whose right is abused should go to court to enforce his rights. We will not throw the baby with the bathwater out because you feel it will be abused. Is there, look at uh, the, the, the way we are also visiting the issue of uh, uh, conduct of uh, a local government election because of the abuse we must give a try to the state police. I continue to insist that is one of the most viable options in solving our security challenges. All right, thank you for that. Now, you talked about, you mentioned your political zones and peculiar challenges. And just very briefly, I ask because let, let's look at the Southeast. For a while now, there have been sit-at-home orders, there have been the unknown gunmen, there's been ESN, a lot of challenges in that area. Why has it taken so long for it to be addressed? Um, on Mondays, there's a lot of economic activity stalled as a result of the, the menace of this sit-at-home order and people, you know, at the risk of people. People would rather obey that order than, than obey the government because there's no um, guarantee for security of lives and property. Why has it linger, lingered for so long and what should we be doing to address that particular geopolitical tension? Well, the, the, the situation is, uh, in the South is, is quite unfortunate. I've also maintained that it's a political problem that requires a political solution. Uh, I expect, my personal opinion, I expect that the government should engage in a dialogue with uh, Nam De Kano because some miscreants under the name of unknown government are exploiting this situation. And he has assured, now the Kano has assured that if he's released, he's going to control these people. So why don't we give it a try? Man, our economy is grand every Monday sit at home. And people are afraid. If you come out on, on Monday against the directive of government, and the, I see some governors, it, it's funny and laughable. Some governors in the South is coming to say, don't obey the order, come out. Who will come out to risk his life? 
So I think it's a political problem that requires a political solution. The government should engage Nam the Kanu and see how we, we can come out of this uh, problem. Because uh, why I'm saying this, you also note what is happening in rivers. Most of our problems are political. The political crisis in rivers, if it's not checked, can also explode and go beyond our control. Let us try as much as possible not to create more problems for our security agencies by reckless political uh, activities. Our politicians should, be, we should note that if there is no Nigeria, there is no, no place for them to govern. So they must try to protect it. Think of Nigeria first instead of thinking about yourself, about politics. Let us think about Nigeria. The moment we we'll continue to do that, then the better for us. Well, on that note, we would like to thank you very much, Mr. Michael Joffo, for joining us on the morning show.